G'day. Uh, we're starting this video in the kitchen today, obviously. Um, we're talking about the iodine conversion test. Now, you've probably seen me do it uh, in a lot of my videos, but I sort of just briefly and quickly do it just to show you that conversion is completed. Uh, what it is about is your malt's full of starch, and when you mash it, it turns those starches into sugars. Uh, the iodine test tests for starch, so if you have starch left in your mash, uh, the conversion isn't complete. Uh, so you can leave it go a bit longer or do what you have to do to get it done. We're trying two different ones today. I have got the iodine uh, Ifador, iodine sanitizer or sterilizer. And some people, and even me in the past, that's why I have this bottle, um, it can be hard to get iodine sometimes. Uh, Kegland have it now, that's where I got that. And you can get it at some brew, other brew shops. Uh, and I was struggling to get it for a time, so I started using Betadine. And that does work, and we'll show you that. It can be a little bit more problematic, uh, but we'll go into that in more detail later. So what I'm gonna quickly do to show you a bit easier, um, I've got some grain dust in this bowl, and I'm gonna put some corn flour in this bowl. And you might wonder why corn flour, uh, well, it's, other name is corn starch. And it's because it's starch. A lot of people do put corn flour, not a lot, but I've seen people put corn flour in beers like their and IPAs and things. And after the mash, like into the boil, um, I wouldn't advise that. Um, well, you can do it if you like, if you just want starch in your beer. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to mention while the examples of people adding flour to their NIPAs has thankfully dropped off a lot, what I have seen rise in popularity is steeping uh, oats or porridge, whatever you want to call it, um, for their extract beers uh, or for their stouts or, or whatever they're making. And it's just not good because if you're not mashing the oats with grain, all you're making is a starchy water and you're adding that to your beer, uh, you may as well just add corn flour or corn starch and I don't think anyone would really want to do that to their beers. Back to the video. Anyway, we'll forget about that for now, and uh, I'll start showing you the starch test or the iodine conversion test. So here we have two bowls. This one has the grain dust from the bottom of one of my mill buckets. I've just put it into two separate piles. We'll try the Betadine in one and the Ifador on the other one. And in this one, we'll put some corn flour. We'll start with the Eiffel door. I'll just put a few drops onto the grain. I don't know if you can see that. That it's turning black, a very dark color. If I mix it in a little bit, you might even see it a bit better. I've got too much grain dust in here. But you see it goes black, a purpley black color. That's of course it's mostly starch. We'll put some in the corn flour as well, just to show you. And again, it's straight away, it's gone a dark black color. Next we'll try the Betadine, Betadine, whatever you want to call it. You can see there again, I'll grab the spoon. You can see the normal color of it, where it's a brown color, but once you mix it with this starch, Oh, this is grain dust, but starch, yeah, you can see it goes black. We'll try it with the corn flour, and the same thing will happen, of course. Turn the bowl around. 
Probably needs a bit more in there. Add a little bit, a little bit, add a little bit more. But it's the same thing. It goes black. That's quite easy to see here using betadine that that is starch. Now I don't can test for other chemicals, but we're only uh, worried about starch at the moment. Keep this video basic. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea. Let's move into the brewery and we'll do it in a real brewing situation. I will mention, you wanna do your iodine tests uh, around you know, your normal like 20 degrees. Uh, it just makes the test more reliable. Uh, like with most of your tests, your hydrometer tests and your refract tests and your pH tests, it's just much more reliable at uh, a room sort of temperature, temperature, room temperature, temperature. But the way we do it quickly in the brewery or the old school way, we should put your white plate, nice to have a white plate so you can see the color change. And you just put it into the freezer, uh, you know, five, 10 minutes before you do the test. Then when you get your little bit of sample out and put it into the bowl, it cools down nice and quick. G'day, we're here on brew day. I have my betadine solution and I have the Ida 4 iodine steriliser. We're gonna do them side by side and see if uh, the betadine matches up to the Ida 4. Uh, you won't see much of me. We've got to do this quick before conversion happens in the samples we're using. And, uh, but let's get to it, eh? So what I'm going to do now, I'll start by mashing in. As soon as I've mashed in and stirred it up, I'm going to take a sample out and we'll try and show you what it looks like when the starches haven't been converted. Just turn the pump on. I'm not going to try to get the dust, which I could sit on top there. I'm just going to take that from the pump. I've only just turned the pump on. We'll see how we go with that sample. See how it's turned black? That means the conversion hasn't completed. You wouldn't expect to because it's a start of mash. It's a bit harder to see with a better dyne. Trust the truck to go past. It's a bit harder to see with a better dyne. A little bit more word in. You can see, I don't think he'll pick it up on camera. So it's a, you need a different sort of ratio. You can see that's black now, the color has changed. So both are indicating the conversion hasn't happened. It just took a little bit more work with the betadine, a little bit more time. That was instantaneous. We'll try again in another 20 minutes or so. We are halfway into the mash, about half an hour in. Um, so I'll take another sample. Should use the camera work while I'm doing this one-handed. We don't want bits of grain, bits of grain might skew the test. That'll do. Straight out of the freezer. So it's about three mil I'm putting in there. You could put, use more, but just in case you're wondering, it was about three mil. Just 
just a couple of drops oh that's still going a touch dark it's not like before see we still conversion still isn't over it's been half an hour at uh, 66 Different temperatures convert quicker, slower, all that sort of thing. But that's not quite over yet, I can tell. We'll try with the Betadine. A bit hard to tell how much to use. So you might be happy with that reading. Oh no, I can see it going dark. It's really, it's a lot harder to see. But yeah, that's going dark. I don't know. I hope the camera's picking it up. It is going dark. It's nowhere near, again, as indicative as the other test is. It's definitely not staying that sort of brighty yellow colour. And this one. It's definitely gone dark. You can see both of them. Well, it's not converted. It's a lot closer, I think, but it's not converted yet. So we'll try again. Been a little while, had to go and pick up the daughter from my first day at school. Straight from the freezer. Let's make it a bit bigger this time. Get it nice and cool. Eye for door. Better Dean. Still enough in here, probably. You can see there, that nothing has really changed. I'll bring a bit more in here. Now that's pretty good. What I will show you is what can happen if you get grain in there. I've just pulled that out of the mash. So this mash is done. If you accidentally get a bit of grain, I'll just over exaggerate. But grain can sometimes I think my conversion's pretty good this time. Sometimes when you get some grain in there, the grain will give you a bit of a false reading. I think it's going to prove me wrong this time. It's proven me wrong. Believe me, sometimes <laughs> when you put grain in, you'll get a false reading. I grabbed a bit more. I see, there you go. That started to turn then. You can see how it's gone darker. The whole lot's gone a little bit darker colour. 
that's what can happen when you have grain in your sample. First one probably was fully converted, bits I grabbed, but I just grabbed another scoop from near the side. And see how it's changed the colour of it? I hope you can pick that up on the camera. It could just give you a little bit of a false reading, so you always try and get a sample without any grain, even without any, you know, dust from the crush, which is hard to do sometimes, but... You can see here, a nice clean sample. Conversion is done. That's with the Benadine. Grab a little bit of uh, Ifador. We'll chuck a bit of Ifador in there just to double check. No, that, con that conversion is complete. You can see the difference in the colours. Some people might ask why. It's just insurance. Making sure your mash is complete. Some mashes will take longer than others. Temperature can make a difference. Just on the day, things can uh, make a difference. Um, the brew day I had that I did the testing in, usually my mashes are finished in 30 minutes. My 30 minute test, it wasn't finished. Uh, so I kept going. And that's just one of the things that happens sometimes. I should mention too, don't put the samples back into your beer or anything like that. Yes, iodine can be good for humans, but you don't want to be drinking that stuff. Tip it out, uh, dispose of it. Wear gloves if you have to, it will stain your hands. Um, just be careful. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Cheers. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons. Like, subscribe, share if you like the video. Uh, if you want the t-shirts, there's the links down below. Cheers.